a lot upon O.J. Simpson case anymore because a lot of people aren't that old. You know, a lot of people aren't old enough to know the O.J. Simpson case, so now I can do the Trayvon Martin case, which was almost parallel with the O.J. case. They didn't have an eyewitness to prove anything the state was claiming. But see, now I can use the Trayvon case. It's the Trayvon word against uh, whoever, Zimmerman. Yeah. Oh, and, and dead men tell no tales. And that's what I said to him. It's funny, to a lawyer one time with my sister, she got into an auto wreck. I said, the best thing for that guy to have done is hit your car, and you laying on the ground, back up over you, kill you, then he wouldn't know what time. Because dead men tell no tales. He said, I don't know how that bitch got out in the middle of the street. She got out in the middle of the street, boom, I just ran her over. I tried to avoid her, I hit a car. Boom, I squished her. Dead men tell no tales. So the, 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 the brave guy said to my sister, well, that's a little graphic and gruesome, and I don't really want to go there with your sister. It's like this. She's a lady in her room. I said, she's a lot tougher than you think she is. She don't tend to sensibilities clean. She can handle a graphic story like that. Trust me. This ain't 1808, you know, like talking to somebody's little granny. I said, she's a woman. She's a tough old, she's a tough old gal. She can handle a little uh, colorful story like that. That's exactly what happened with Trayvon Martin with the O.J. Simpson thing. If the Trayvon lived, and he might be able to come to court and testify, and then then maybe all the evidence would have tipped the scales of justice a little bit towards you know the other guy, the Trayvon. But since he was dead, Zimmer was the only one to speak or not speak, and he didn't speak at all. So there you go. There was no testimony in the court from anybody. No, no testimony from Trayvon. No testimony from George Zimmer. They had no case. There was nobody that came to court to testify. The attorneys weren't testifying. All right. So how do you so how do you feel about the, the uh, staying your ground? Oh, I can kill less about that kind of nonsense. About the standing ground thing. Whatever you think is necessary and proper for your survival, nobody can right. judge you. So right. I played on the video too. I did necessary and proper for probably about an hour. So that's basically the stand your ground thing. It's necessary and proper for. You could call it standy ground, but it's a necessary and proper doctrine. And that's why I said, as I said, that's why half the Constitutional Convention walked out in 1789. Patrick Henry said, Give me liberty, give me death. I said, I signed that piece of crap. I said to them on a, on a, on a, on a video I did, I said, Read Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18. Anything that the government or any officer of the government or any agent of the government feels that is necessary and proper to carry out the execution of this Constitution, they may do. And then Patrick Henry said, this creates a dictatorship. This is just what the king says. The king says that we do whatever he thinks is necessary proper for the survival of the land. That he could execute any, any, anything that he feels is necessary and proper for, uh, for our survival. You, know, you people are just pretending to be little kings. And the half of the delegation got up out of the Constitutional Convention and walked out. See, now that they never show you on a movie. There should be twice as many people who signed that damn thing, but they got up and left. How come they never show you that in the movies? Because the government doesn't say, well, like a Nancy Pelosi will say, well, we do because the Commerce Clause allows us, or the Interstate Commerce Clause allows us, or the, or the whatever clause allows us. No, they're relying upon a necessary and proper clause. But then they're going to tell you that they're relying upon the necessary and proper clause. They'll say, well, the Treaty Clause, or no, it's not the Treaty Clause. It's not the Interstate Commerce Clause. It's none of those silly clauses. It's a necessary and proper clause. But they're never going to say the necessary and proper clause because you guys are going to Google it. And you guys are going to learn a history like I did that half the delegation left the Constitutional Convention way back when. As soon as they said, you pull that damn clause 18 out or we're out of here. So obviously that's the last clause because they realized, well, you know, by putting clause 18 in there, this is basically anything we wish to do at any time we wish to do it. it for any reason we wish to do it, we can do We're just going to do it. They didn't need to write anything more for themselves. They already had it back right there. So like I said, people don't realize that. I wish they made a movie about that, and they said, hey, you know, everybody left. Why? Because the government's going to turn themselves into a dictatorship. That will, anytime it wishes to. Anytime it believes that it's got enough guns, and enough personnel, and enough money, and enough control over its citizenship, it's going to fucking citizenry. It's going to, it's going to take over. Because they feel it's necessary and proper. And that's what they walked out of the convention. They said, you know what? Eventually the government's going to get so big, based upon this clause, that you people will be slaves. You people will do these are a whole bunch of little kings running around. It's going to turn right back to merry old England. And they said, we don't want no part of this. We're not signing that piece of filth. 
and they left. Why do you think they left? Go study it. But like I said, that kind of stuff is hard to find. Maybe if you Google Patrick Henry walks out of the Constitutional Convention, maybe that might start steering these in the right direction. I don't know. I never Googled that. Maybe they, or maybe why did Patrick Henry refuse to sign? Maybe that'll, maybe that'll help teach you guys what I'm trying to say. Instead of just saying, well, I'll call some crazy guy who just says all these silly shit. He said, oh, wow, man. And we actually didn't go back and Google it right now. He didn't. He did refuse to sign it. Yeah. <laughs> why? Because it creates a dictatorship. It's been saying that piece of, that, that, that clause is insane. But that's the George Zimmerman excuse. He goes, that's the same problem. He just filed a piece of dick. That's the same problem for his survival. Just like the tale of the Minoet. It's about the sea captain who had a boat, had a ship. It was, it was at one time a British commercial vessel, vessel, but it went into private hands, his hands, and then he had three people working, and they had to eat the cabin boy when that ship crashed and they were in a rowboat. When he went back to England, England, everybody in England wanted to string up the captain because uh, that's a gruesome. Back then, that's like beyond gruesome. What do you mean you ate the cabin boy? <laughs> it's like, well, you know, while I apologize to his mom, his mom was like leading about to hang the captain fucking parade. But they said, no, he had to do what he thought was necessary, proper for the survival of. He was under his domestic authority. It was his rule. He got to choose what he wanted to do on his ship. And once you boarded his vessel, you were totally under his authority 100%. There's not a damn thing you can complain about it when you get back to somebody else's domestic authority. You can't say, hey, my husband just beat the crap out of me. Well, hey. What domestic authority were you under? His. Well, hey, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, hey, my husband just ate all my children. Oh, well, what do you want to tell you? You want his boat? Oh, well, what do you want to tell you? Nothing we can do about it. He said that's what was necessary and proper for everybody's survival. What do you want us to do about it? We weren't there. Dead men tell no tales. Oh, Jason, walk. And Zimmer, walk. Dead men tell no tales. Pretty simple. You always see that in every fucking gangster movie. Hey, kill everybody. Kill everybody? Yeah, even the little children. Even everybody. Just thought that men tell no jails. No they make movies about stuff like that. Chasing little kids in an Amish community. Hey, that little boy witnessed it. I witnessed whatever it was with Harrison Ford. Hey, get the little boy. Why? Because he's a witness. Dead men tell no tales. They have no third party impartial witness. They have no case. Everybody knows that. It's an ancient, simple world. So, when a state's moving a case against you, obviously you become the petitioner because you're the witness to yourself. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs>